Thank you. Inner healing is fundamental to the inbreaking of grace in my own journey when I was around 18. Some of you, you know some of this story. Uh, I'd come to a Life and Spirit seminar and got prayed over on the night for prayer by Marion Cassidy and a very young Tim Kirk. And after they prayed with me, I, I went and knelt before the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, that was part of the, the prayer of that evening. And in that moment, the Lord uh, visited uh, a period of my life that was quite painful when I was 12. Some of you know this story that uh, I was on the school bus. Often, my experience of the school bus was quite intimidating. Uh, I'd been targeted um, as someone to bully. Uh, it was a snowballing uh, effect of, of, as a child, having my Achilles tendon too short on both legs, walking on my toes, uh, having been teased, having surgery at seven uh, to rectify that, and yet having this legacy of being a loner and in awkward um, in terms of bonding in with team sport and uh, uh, so there was this there was this uh, I was the eldest in uh, of three boys uh, and at that point I was pretty much sort of uh, braving this stuff alone so school bus would sometimes be the occasion of uh, bullying and, and some physical abuse as well. Uh, my, my tactic was to stand at the front of the bus, near the bus driver, but my foil was to read the newspaper. And anyone that lives with me now will tell you that I, I, I'm not practiced at reading the newspaper normally. Uh, so that got me through most mornings and afternoons on the bus uh, in relative uh, kind of sense of security. What exposed my strategy was on a particular afternoon, we'd had a sports carnival. A lot of students walked home because school finished early. So the bus was only half full. So my standing at the front near the bus driver, reading the newspaper, looked really fake. And it became the occasion of some year 10 students who I did find intimidating uh, on either side of the bus, uh, targeting me with a game of spitting. So as I faced um, out of the front driving window, they were behind me and from either side of the bus, they, they had this game of uh, projecting spit onto my back. I think the, in the, in the moment, I felt very unprotected, uh, no one defended me in that moment my only hope was that as soon as the next stop came, that I could just get off the bus no matter how far from my stop it was uh, it reminded me as a kid seeing uh, Walt Disney and Goofy uh, as a character when he was humiliated he would uh, <laughs> he would just kind of shrink and that's exactly what I experience like just shrinking and wanting to just disappear uh, walking home uh, I just hoped that mum and dad wouldn't be there to, to meet me because I wanted to be able to get rid of the evidence of the slag the spit on my back on the coat um, and I never could talk to them about this stuff because it carried a certain amount of shame for me that's when I was 12 as a culmination of uh, primary school bullying uh, once I got into high school. 
But remembering I'm at this Life in a Spirit seminar, I'm 18 years old. I've been prayed over by Marianne and Tim. I go before the Blessed Sacrament. And the Lord visits that experience. I'm aware that he who took on Spittle himself stood with me that profoundly in his passion he stands in solidarity with uh, the shame that we've either caused on ourselves or at the hands of others uh, and that he accompanies and brings redemption into that most painful moments of, of our lives I, I believed a lie that I wasn't worth protecting what is the lies that you've believed in your bearing past wounding so this is where we're going to go uh, looking at that gift of, of inner healing so Damien Stain renew your wonders when he speaks about the spiritual gifts for today he believes that inner healing uh, is very much worthy of uh, mention because through the hands, he says, of those skilled and anointed by the Holy Spirit, a truly profound transformation can take place that's far beyond the natural powers of normal counseling and therapy or any well-developed human process. So when we look at what is this that we're talking about? Michael Scanlon, Father Michael Scanlon, defines it in this way. Inner healing is the healing of the inner man. The inner man, we mean the intellectual, volitional and affective areas. Commonly referred to as mind and, and will and heart, but including such other areas as the emotions, the psyche, soul and spirit. So John Wimber, he defines inner healing as a process in which the Holy Spirit brings forgiveness of sins and emotional renewal to people suffering from damaged minds, wills and emotions. So it interests me that in his letter of the Holy Father, uh, the apostolic letter with a father's heart, uh, on that 150th anniversary of the proclamation of St. Joseph as patron of the Universal Church. In point five of his address, he says, If the first stage of all true interior healing is to accept our personal history and embrace even the things in life that we did not choose, we must now add another important element creative courage so he goes on to develop this in relation to the virtues of saint joseph but also calling that creative courage forth in in our own life so what a beautiful definition that that inner healing is the embracing of our whole personal story david stain shares about his uh, conferences for healing and that at one point they'd been praying for physical healing not not specifically for inner healing and after the the first day of the conference the next day a woman come forward and she volunteered her testimony that she'd been 20 years before in a car crash uh, that would mean that she would continue to have these noises in her ears and tremendous uh, physical um, pain and weakness in her body uh, for, ex for example she couldn't lift even like something like a, a bowl of cereal the physical symptoms were healed after the prayer the day before uh, but the actual deeper more profound healing for her was uh, the emotional healing because every morning since her accident can you imagine for 20 years she would wake up crying uncontrollably and urinating. And on the day that she received healing from her bodily weakness and, and physical um, issues around the, the ears, uh, she also received that deep 
freedom to wake after all those years now and no longer be in a state of trauma. So 20 years of suffering and humiliation was met uh, with the great love and the freeing uh, grace that comes from Jesus and this interior healing. So as you can see, a person could accompany another another in seeking this kind of uh, prayer. Uh, it could also be inspired uh, or, or by hearing a prophetic word in a, in a mass or in a gathering um, that actually sets in motion then a process of interior healing. Um, sometimes it's just simply by being in the presence of God's power in a, in a healing or a Holy Spirit service. And, and there's actually not another person actually praying for, for any issues. If we were to say, what, what are some of these common elements? Damien would describe it in this way that firstly, there can be like a recognition or an ownership of unhealthy, harmful pattern of thoughts or emotions or behavior. Uh, as a process of, of inner healing, there can also be uh, a sense that there's an underlying um, event that's maybe real or, or could even be perceived that's feeding into these unhealthy behaviors. Often inner healing can be accompanied with that, that need to forgive ourselves or others. And we understand that forgiveness can be like a graced sovereign moment, or it could also be like a process. And again, that it's helpful to facilitate that the person understands that forgiveness actually releases them from being a victim and that it's a decision and it's a beginning, um, not always accompanied by, by feeling, but can deepen and mature and, and then that peace can then accompany in time. Often in a healing involves repentance, uh, releasing us from the burden of guilt and shame. Uh, the, the, the blessing of opening to God's transforming love. There can be, as a common element, that the person identifies an event or events that's left an inner wound. It could be a, a memory um, that's brought back, or it could even be like an insight, a revelation by the Holy Spirit, um, or, or the gift of a word of knowledge. Uh, Damien Stein makes comment that sometimes in the in a healing prayer process, it's not always appropriate if you have a sense of a word of knowledge. When you're creating that as you like that safe space for them to be vulnerable to God's presence, sometimes injecting what we try to understand as a leading or a word of knowledge at a particular moment in that place of, of a great vulnerability, it may not actually always be the right time. The insight could be helping you to know how to posture the accompaniment and the prayer support. Um, but the person themselves, sometimes if it's involving a very deep, painful memory, the body buries that, the mind buries that in order to cope. Uh, so, it could be worth just praying privately about what your sense of uh, knowledge or insight is and to wait as it were for also the prompting of the right timing to have that kind of uh, discussion, which could be more appropriate as a follow-up rather than in the actual uh, prayer moment. Often accompanying in a healing is the release of pent up emotion it could be from deep uh, frustration anger sorrow loss or fear um, and the release is, is necessary because it allows the the deeper issue or wounding or misconception to to become clear uh, in uh, the experience of inner healing uh, Often the person uh, becomes aware that God is present, bringing a new peace into that inner pain. 
not erasing it, but transforming it. And sometimes this accompanies the transforming of a, a lie that was believed. Um, Damien Stain speaks of the, the root lie. Uh, for my own experience of being on the bus and having no one to defend me coupled with other life experiences I carried a, a sense that I wasn't worth defending obviously this doesn't measure up it's it's a skewed perception uh, which would kind of lead to other uh, unhealthy reactions so the presence of God's grace and truth as it were uh, transforms this lie and brings a, 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 a whole way forward that bathes the painful experience and the misconceptions bathes it in a, a light uh, and, and a new vision which which kind of we see who we are in light of the, the, the presence, the face of God. Okay, so Damien suggests a, a very simple model for inner healing prayer. I, I'll take you through those uh, six steps now. Let's enter into them. It can be something that you do with pair uh, later. Um, but I, I'd invite you to enter into this moment now in a very simple way. Uh, at the conclusion of the six steps, there's a quiet meditation uh, that I've created which sheds light on our inner landscape, if you like, with the analogy of the seasons, the winter, spring of summer of autumn so at the end of these six steps there'll be an opportunity as it were having moved from the thinking through the steps to the meditation that just creates something expansive to facilitate the holy spirit at work in you so let's start he suggests that in another situation other than this one that you could get into pairs decide who would receive prayer and and who will pray so the person receiving prayer you just simply ask the holy spirit dear dear spirit of god uh, reveal to me any event that needs healing or any person who needs forgiveness so just Take a moment, even in this moment. The Holy Spirit is definitely at work. So allow the Holy Spirit to bring to mind something or some person from the past who, who needs or that needs forgiveness. So even in the recalling or identifying, you may be engaging with emotions. And that's okay. <laughs> and then when you feel that you can, it's good that you want with your will to pray this following prayer and I'll, I'll take you through the prayer so in the name of, of Jesus I forgive the person that I'm calling to mind right now and I'm forgiving them for the situation that I'm also calling to mind I pray that they will be released from all negative consequences resulting from this sin. And I ask you, Jesus, to bless them with your joy, peace, with your happiness, with your love. 
may they prosper in, in every way. Amen. So Damien suggests that during this process that the the other person just simply prays silently or or in prayer tongues, just sort of standing with your brother, with your sister, you know, with a ministering presence. Um, in this model, he's suggesting not to use words of knowledge or in any way direct the process other than helping the person through each stage at the appropriate time. Okay, so having moved through those six steps, I leave you just to enter prayerfully now uh, into this final uh, concluding meditation. Come now, let us talk this over, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. So Lord ministers deeply to our spirit in the profoundity of inner healing we become aware that the scarlet of my sin is washed clean in the scarlet of Christ's blood. As this truth settles deeply into our spirit, what rises is the desire to release all those that may be in debt to us with the same love that we ourselves have received from the Lord. And amid the protests of justice and revenge, There's this arresting quality of mercy that in its unconditional and generous releasing of sentence and debt that it disarms us in any way of placing conditions on those who are in debt to us. Sometimes after the snow-covered hibernation of God's expansive forgiveness, it kind of blankets, as it were, our experience of, of hurt or shame. There's 
this thawing period where what is underneath whether it be the the details of the damage so there's a growing in, in an awareness of the weight of the injury or it could also be uh, what's underneath in the sense of the the new growth the 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 release of pain the capacity to move again to to be unstuck or unfrozen if you like so there's a beautiful movement from the winter of forgiveness into um, a spring time of forgiveness both weighing the damage um, and also moving in a, a new level of, of freedom The melt of springtime builds to summer's river. No longer relying on our own efforts, the riverbed of our painful memories are flooded with the very source of love and forgiveness. Subjected to the constant flow of healing from the Savior's opened heart, even the sharpest boulders are shaped by grace. While scars remain, they direct us to union with the risen one who bears in his very hands, his side, his feet, the scars of sin that united with us bring a new way of loving a new ability to live where wounds become places of healing places of joyfully drawing near in intimacy to the Saviour and recognition of His humble drawing near to us Rejoice, my people. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For the rain that he sends shows forth his faithfulness. Once more the autumn rains will come, as well as the rains of spring. The threshing floors again will be piled high with grain 
and the presses will overflow with new wine and olive oil. The Lord says, I will give you back what you lost to the devouring locusts. Dear Lord, your early rains speak of your spirit poured out, not only in the days of old, but in our time, that it's by your spirit that you renew us in your love. The autumn speaks of shedding what's no longer required, making space for the new thing that yet springs forth. So Father, in the name of Jesus, in that deep interior landscape of our hearts and souls. Renew us by your Spirit.